Hey everybody, Jedi Jack Luther. I know it's been a while since I put a video out. And I haven't really gotten much in the mail that has been worthy enough to put on my channel. So it's been kind of a backlog, but I'm hoping to get some stuff in shortly and get it up there. But until I do, I wanted to give a really good comprehensive review of probably one of my favorite ships. Um, this is the Republic gunship from the movie Attack of the Clones. Now, I know I, re I realize a lot of people aren't big fans of the prequels, but there are some people that actually do like them. And I actually like Attack of the Clones. It's one of my favorite ones of the prequels. Um, just for all the stuff that happens in it, it's a pretty good... It's got that detective feel to it where Kenobi's out trying to find the truth and, you know, we're led down the road to find out what's really going on about what's everything's happening. So near the end of the movie, it turns into a massive firefight and the armies of the Republic show up to save the Jedi from the uh, threat on, on Geonosa. And when they show up, they show up in these beautiful Republic gunships. And this is literally one of my favorite ships um, that, that not only I own, but I just think it's a wonderful ship to begin with. Um, this ship is literally built for firepower. That's what it's built for. And it has multiple attack on it that it can go out and do a lot of damage. If I had this when I was a kid, I can guarantee you it, it wouldn't have lasted very long because I would have played with it like literally every day and all the bombs and missiles and stuff on it would get lost because I would just be blowing up everything. It's, it's a wonderful toy. And I have a feeling that these were snatched up by collectors more than they were bought for kids at the time. Which, unfortunately, seems to be the mainstay. You know, we're trying to get the kids into the Star Wars theme, but the adult collectors are still buying up this stuff faster than anyone can get it. And then... The scalpers are charging an arm and a leg for it. But enough on that. So this is the Republic gunship. I put it on this thing so it's easier to turn. It's a massively big ship. And it's really, really nice looking. Um, like I said, it was built for massive destruction. And I'm going to go over all the points. It, it has several functions to it, which a good Star Wars toy will always multi-purpose and multitask in what it has to do. Its prime objective, of course, is firepower, and it has it all over the place. Right off the bat, we have front cannons that rotate and swivel. And not only that, a button... There it goes. A button will fire the missile off, the gun... the the gun off and turn it into a missile and this can also be like battle damage like the guns have been blown off the front and they pop right back in there um, on the top are giant mounted cannons and with a push of a button they fire off a very long missile um, and you just reload those in the, it has a few non-firing things on it as well to add to the, the playtime value. Each wing has these dual rotating cannons. They are, as you can see, they're, they're, it's a ball that covers through the entire wing. And there's little laser guns encapsulated in them. And it makes a wonderful clicking noise. And that just harkens back to the vintage feel of Star Wars. When you had R2-D2 and you turned his thing and he clicked and everything like that. To add even more firepower, if you lift this up. Oops, I don't have to get that piece. You lift it up, there are four bombs under each wing that you can just drop. And more firepower so you hit the button and you open up the side components the side components have missiles on the underside and the piece that dropped off that I have to get oof, 
here we go. It has a pop-in tail gun. There is a set of grappling claws that attaches to underneath the um, tail gun. I took, I unthreaded it and took it off because it just, it's kind of takes away from it and it's just, I just didn't want them on there. There are two other things on this gunship. The side turrets um, did not come with the gunship, but its ability to hold two pilots, these clone pilots that came out in the attack of the clone line, each came with one of these turrets. The turrets stand alone, but they also mount to the inside of the gunship and have handles for control and they also shoot a uh, green missile out. The missile is shaped in a triangular fashion because in the movie, there are actually bigger pods that clone troopers are sitting in and they're shooting these triangular lasers that turn into one beam, kind of like a mini version of the Death Star. They did make those giant pods later on in a battle pack. You got one pod and two clone troopers. But they were very hard to find, and people who found them scooped them up very quickly. And now they're very expensive on the secondary. So I'm lucky that I have these on here. I'm not going to complain too much. So its primary function is for firepower, and it is loaded with it. I mean, you could you just make a bombing. Just one machine here can do a lot of damage. But the other function is for troop transport slash storage. In inside here, you know, it's dusty. I need to clean that off. Inside is a panel that has a lot of pegs on it, and your figures can peg into that. And as you fly the ship, there's a little button back here, and it releases that panel. So if your troops are lined up perfectly on it, and you hit the button, they will cleanly drop down and deploy. Um, I can tell you that doesn't work all the time. Clone troopers or any other troopers do not line up perfectly with that hole and I've had the thing stuck because because of it. If you look up into the ship, which I tell you it's not easy to do because of the lighting. Let me move it. Now. Up in here there's a spot they made a clone trooper with a speeder bike of some sort. The speeder bike can fit up in here so that they have a weapon, they have a vehicle to put on the ground to, to do. Um, let me pop off the tail gun so I don't lose that again when I lift this up. And underneath the wings, let me clip these back into place. Underneath the wings, you can hear them, they're hollow. There are two storage cabinets. Um, you can store weapons, guns, lightsabers, anything. This is, to me, this is an updated version of the Rebel Transport from Empire Strikes Back. Although the Rebel Transport didn't have that much firepower on it, but it did have the elements of storing figures and storing weapons. And not only is it a ship, but it can be considered a playset. Because of all the stuff that you can land it on the surface of a planet and it becomes a base you can move from and deploy troops and take it back up again. Um, this one is one of the original gunships from Attack of the Clones. They've made other ones. They used the same mold and just kept repainting it. But this is one of the original ones. Um... They made several different formats. They're, they made a Clone Wars cartoon, not the computer animated series that was very popular. They, it was a hand-drawn, several episodes of a hand-drawn Clone Wars cartoon that was very brief. And one of the ships in that, one of the gunships, is painted like a blue shark. And it was really cool. And they made that into a toy. Um, so they've just used the same mold, but repainted it for different colors, for different schemes, for different, you know, there was a gunship for Revenge of the Sith because this did make a return in Revenge of the Sith, and that's the last time we would see it. Um, there is a few imperfections on it, though. 
and uh, it's not the perfect ship on the planet. Um, right, right off the bat, the grappling hook feature, they're, I, they're stored away, I just didn't want them. But they're very large claws attached to a string, and they hang off the back of the gunship where you could grapple things. But that never happened in the movie, and you have to wrap that rope all the way around the hook that's on the back. And it just doesn't look right. It takes away from the point of the ship. The ship is, you know, comes in and blows stuff up. Um, the side panels don't always lock in very well. Depending on the ship you get and the quality control on it, those panels don't lock in very. you got to kind of push on them. Um, I would have liked a door panel on these front doors that came down like a ramp and then you could lock them into place. And um, someone had, some designs have this whole open area completely enclosed by a big door that when you hit it, and I don't think those ever got made. I think that's just like a design of one, but they never got made like that. That would look cool if the whole interior was enclosed. Um, but you know, this one works very well. There's only a few things on it that's not perfect. Um, I understand making this look like a missile to fire, but I would have done without the tip and just left the cannon part and had a little black in there to make it look like a gun because then even if you shot it out, it could look like, like I said before, battle damage. Um, these retail on eBay because of the secondary, they can get up to $100, $125, $150, depending on the model, how old it is, whether it's in a box. I got a really good deal on this one, and I went for it. And then I bought me the Clone Trooper Pilots with each of them with a turret on it. Um, like I said, this is one of my favorite ships. Um, I just think it's a really nice-looking ship, and it makes an excellent display piece. When you put figures in it and everything, it, it really stands out. Um if, you, if you're like, well, I don't like Attack of the Clones, that's fine. But you've got to admit, this is a really beautiful ship. And you probably could do one with your collection. If you have a bunch of clone troopers, you can load them in here and just um, put it on display like that. That's I put a few Jedis in mine and some clone troopers. And it really looks sharp. So that was my comprehensive review of the Attack of the Clones gunship. It's a really nice looking ship. The paint detail is on it is really cool. It, the paint looks all chipped up like it's been in several battles and has several um, singe marks on it like it's been in a couple of firefights. Um, I'm Jedi Jack Luther. I will be returning with what's in the box as soon as I get a box in to, to open up for you guys. But until then, we'll see you later and we're counting down to episode 8 which is coming out in December. The Last Jedi. We'll see what that one's about. Sounds really good. And I will come back. I will see you in May.